Hey YouTube, welcome back to the shop. I was uh, standing here watching this rather long and boring job run in a piece of very unexciting MDF and thought, you know, it's been quite a while since I did the original follow-up to this build with what I liked and didn't like and I'm sure people who've run across that have wondered what's happened over the last, gosh, I don't know, forever it would seem. So I thought while this is running, I'll do a quick overview video of what's still working, what I've added, and what I've abandoned, which isn't a whole lot. To begin with, the machine still occupies the same spot in my shop, and the podium relative to the machine itself is still just to the left. I'm still running Mach 3. I considered upgrading to Mach 4, but I've I haven't found a reason that would make it worth the trouble. Mach 3 is working flawlessly for me. I know, you don't hear that a lot. The old Windows 95 machine is still ticking right along, and about the only change I've made here is originally I had mounted the Ethernet Smooth Stepper inside the case. It's no longer there. I've moved that inside the podium when I had to expand the number of breakout boards I was using and that was because I integrated the CNC plasma table into the same controller. Where I used to have two parallel cables running from the computer into the control box, now I just have that one white network cable. This also means that if the computer ever dies, or when it dies, I can simply bring in any other computer plug in the network port and I'm good to go. Hopefully she doesn't die anytime soon though. Coming around to the other side of the control cabinet, that digital readout, I still like it. It's just a quick sanity check that I'm not pulling any extra amps and my voltage is correct. All the power supplies still work fine. The drivers are all still in good shape. And up here in the corner is where you can see where I put this Ethernet smooth stepper. In the still, you can see the network cable come up from the bottom into the smooth stepper in the middle. On the right is a C10 breakout board, and on the left is a C25. The second breakout board became necessary when I started integrating the CNC plasma table. The smooth stepper board has been absolutely rock solid, and the ability to expand to up to three breakout boards has proven to be very useful. I'll put links to some of these items down below in the description, so if you're not catching all the names, no worries. When it comes to the motion controls themselves on the machine, I'm still running the round, inexpensive Chinese rails that I originally had on the Y-axis. But on the X and the Z, I've switched to name brand high wind rails. They're quite a bit more expensive. Had I known how successful this machine was going to be in the end, I would have spent the money up front. What drove me to make this change was when I started doing drilling operations and when the cutter would come down against the material I could see the entire axis, the, the Z and the X shift a little bit. These rails locked all of that down so I don't get any of that. Plus they're smoother all around. While we're up here, you can see the aluminum gussets on the side of the x-axis carriage. Yes, those are version 3. When I first made the machine, if you remember, they were plywood, and those really worked super. I should have left them there. I then switched to some expanded PVC. It was not as rigid, so when I got rid of them, I went right to aluminum. And yes, I made those on this machine. One of the other things I've added to the machine is dust collection. I've never really been a fan of a dust boot. I like to see the cutters doing its work, so I've employed what I consider kind of a, a broom and dust pan approach. On the left is a small quarter inch lock line that I'm blowing a low pressure stream of air directly over to the larger two inch lock line, which has got a vacuum attached. I think in the end I'm going to wind up with two of the low pressure air nozzles so I'm blowing air from two different directions to clear areas when I'm doing slotting. I've yet to come up with a way I like for supporting the vacuum hose so right now it's just kind of laying there and I've got it velcro strapped to one of the stepper motors. 
I used just a regular shop vac for my dust collection on this. The wood shop has a big dust collector, but I don't want to run that big motor for hours on end when the router could be running that long. I have found that cutting this really fine stuff like MDF plugs the filter really quick. So I finally broke down and added one of these little cyclonic pre-filters, essentially making it a two-stage filter system. And I'm here to tell you, it works amazing. Here's a picture. When this job was done, I took this picture, and that's all that was in the vacuum itself. Everything else was in those two buckets. The pressurized air side of this equation, or, or the broom side, is in this quarter-inch lock line. I haven't finalized its location yet, which is why it's still held on with zip ties. The blue line curls around, goes down through all the cable tracks, and comes out on the operator side at this air pressure manifold. I built this manifold for this precise purpose, but I wanted it to also include a blow-off gun and a valve. So you can see there the air comes in on the right, goes to the, the blow gun through a quarter inch ball valve, then a small pressure regulator, and out to the z-axis or out to the spindle. To automate the flow of air, I'm going to be adding a quarter inch uh, solenoid actuated air valve. It'll be over by the spindle controller somewhere. For now, I've modified the Mach 3 interface and added a button which I labeled as vacuum. So I can turn it on whenever I want it to start and then the all stop command shuts it down at the end of the job. I still use my tool height setter every day. There's a link right here to a video where I talk about how I made it. My wireless jog pendant, I don't use it very often. There's nothing wrong with it, it works fine, but my keyboard is so close to the machine that it's kind of a moot point. Fun toy, but that's about all it was for me, at least in this setup. Part of my original design included putting all the stepper drivers and motors on this mobile podium, I call it. The reason I did that was so I could take all the cables loose from one machine and move it to another. Well, that machine is my CNC plasma table. And what I discovered after I added uh, a couple new items at the bottom you see down there, that I really needed to color code these things so that when I'm not paying attention, I don't have to read the XYZ labels, I just match the colors and I'm done. The two kilowatt water-cooled spindle I'm using is still working flawless. I got it off of Amazon. I did a video showing how much quieter a water-cooled spindle is over a router, so here's a link to that if you want to watch it. And sitting behind my spindle is the water cooling setup I did. Here's a link to that video. It's still working really well. The configuration is a little different from original, but it's all the same components. For coolant, I'm still running colloidal silver water. I've had no issues with any kind of growth in the water or anything like that. It just keeps working. Well, I think that covers all the major components. If there's anything I missed or anything you want to know more about, click clack it down there in the comments and I'll see what I can make happen. Thanks and you guys have a good day.